Welcome to Good Game, I'm Bajo. Oh, sorry, so many toys. And I'm Nick Boy, filling in for Hex while she's at E3. Yes, Nick Boy is the host of our digital daily show, Pocket. Thank you very much for joining us down here in the studio. It's just so big. Yeah, don't get too distracted though, because we have a massive episode ahead as we suit up as the Batman in Arkham Knight. What's the square footage? I don't know, but it's bigger than my last four apartments. I won't let that happen, Jim. In case you need to reach me. Unit 247, suspected officer down. Hey, Batman. Every damn time. I love these blue lights. Can I get one of these for my show? Nick, Nick, mm -hmm. Nick. Tell us about the other game we're reviewing this week. We also punch a dodo in Ark Survival Evolved. He's just like wandering in. Just, just watch out for this turtle, everyone. <laughs> oh no. Did you do it? It was Pierre. Plus, Goose looks at why we love the moments of E3 that don't quite go to plan. You, know, you like, grab your trick, and then... Yeah, I grab the trick, yeah. And then you, they can grab their trick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we hope one day, Jamie, you get to grab a trick. And you actually have more than one person making your show. I mean, what do all these people do? What does she do? But before that, can you name the game for this week? Mm, the camera moves too. Maybe this wasn't a good idea. Probably a little too much. Hey, be quiet or you go back to your internet. I'll be good. But first, here's Goose with the news. Are you looking this way, Nick? But he's over there. Don't break the magic of television. Oh. Hi, Goose! Hi, Goose! What's happening in the news? Here's what's making headlines. Shenmue 3 has set crowdfunding records after its announcement at Sony's E3 press conference. The long sought after game was revealed with a not insignificant goal of needing 2 million US dollars to be funded. It met the goal within just nine hours, despite the Kickstarter website suffering performance issues due to high traffic. Sony has since admitted that the Kickstarter was partly a way for them to gauge fan interest, as much more funding will be needed than the $2 million asked for. Come on, let's hurry. Many have noted that the original Shenmue cost about $100 million to develop in 99 when adjusted for inflation. An investment bank known as Mesa Global has inadvertently revealed that the Ouya has been acquired by Razer. On the firm's website, the transactions list showed the acquisition before any official announcement had been made. And at the time of reporting, no other details were available and neither Razer or Ouya have commented on the buyout. And that's all the news for this week. Look at this place. Wow. Does anyone have a hatchet that I can have? Hunters, roll out! Go, Hex, go! You named Dinosaur Hex. Oh, Bruce, come up here. Bruce is so hectic. Kill the turtle. There's enough of this. Let's do it. Oh no, running, running. Aim for the weak part. But? I think so. Oh, oh he's down! Oh, he's down! Yeah. Yes! Okay. It's, it's me! It's a face! Oh, Look at him go! Terrible. Look at him bouncing! <laughs> <laughs> it's like a balloon animal! Marjo, do you know what I love? Is it dinosaurs? It is dinosaurs and starving to death, which was why I was so excited when I heard about Ark Survival Evolved, which kind of came out of nowhere, didn't it? Yeah, the game was announced in early May, and then a few weeks later, it was out in early access. Ark follows in the footsteps of DayZ, Rust, and Reign of Kings as pretty much being a slow, painful death simulator. I'm in the water, I can't... Hi, friend. No, why? Oh no, my legs! My precious legs! Yes, I wouldn't call it a pleasant world to be dumped into. There are so many ways to die. Yeah, almost too many ways, at least at the beginning. I found the first few days in-game the hardest, as I was trying to scavenge enough food to keep myself alive while not having the tools to fight off the killer turtles that wandered the beach with their beady red killer eyes. But the turtles don't attack you. Oh, they do if you punch them in the face. But it's not all death. Once you punch a tree and gather some materials and start to craft some tools, you start to unlock a lot of crafting recipes and can start to build a little life here on this mysterious island. 
And I never really got into any of those other multiplayer survival games. How did you find the crafting compared to something like Reign of Kings? Well, except for the nightmarish Comic Sans font, I loved the crafting. <laughs> the font is awful. It's simple and functional, and the user interface just makes sense. And I like that if you put something in your taskbar, you can just click it and it will auto make another one. You don't have to go into menus. Brilliant. Yeah, that's a good point. And also, you couldn't tame a dinosaur and ride it like a horse in Reign of Kings. I don't have a dinosaur to ride. <laughs> <laughs> I want a dinosaur. Mm, that's true. But what's up with this island? What is the lore of this I have island? No idea. Rideable dinosaurs. Yeah, let's, let's ride out. Let's do this, everyone. <laughs> let's ride out. Weird, glowy, floaty things. It looks like a portal turret. Drinkable oceans? I don't know what the deal is with this place, but I want to live there. Yeah, they're kind of vague about the mythology of the island, but I assume the answers are in there somewhere, or they're coming as they keep developing the game. At least they better, because the trailer showed dragons as well. Yeah, that trailer was incredible, but it did show something that isn't in the game, a stable frame rate. Yeah, the game is a little janky, and it's not like we didn't have PCs that could run it, it just didn't feel very well optimised. Oh, that frame rate, it just hurt my eyes, it turned them into beady little red turtle eyes. I know, I just wanted to punch them. <laughs> uh, but look, the developers have been pretty good at patching things, and the game is way more stable than it was when it first came out. Yeah, this is true, and it's not really fair to criticise right now because it is in early access. Yeah. I did like the scenery, such as these floating palm trees. And the requisite weird open world physics. But despite these occasional glitches, the game still has so much wonder packed into it. I mean, those moments where you're just foraging in the forest and suddenly you hear a thud and then a majestic bronco just steps over the top of you and your torchlight is bouncing off its heights. There is something a bit magical about this game though, isn't there? Because just when you're sitting there and you're looking at all the dinosaurs in the paddock where you see some guy riding a T-Rex okay, or so something. Just pretty much any time you see a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah, that's the dream. Just dinosaurs yeah. and fun with dinosaurs. And that fun is so much more fun when you actually play it with friends. I'm on his tail. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. This dinosaur killed my brother. Get it! <laughs> it's simple motivation and it works for me. Okay. Wandering out alone is scary, but as a group of you go out with all the dinos that you've tamed, you can lay waste to even the biggest Spinosaurus. He's coming! He's coming! He wants me pretty bad! He's coming back! He's so far. Oh, damn! And you get group XP and materials. And that's one of the great things about this game. When you do level up and unlock something, it's yours. You've unlocked that forever. When you die, you just lose whatever you had on you at the time. It's persistent levelling. It takes most of the penalty away from death, which I really like. And it's really helpful if you're like me and you like to taunt those Spinosauruses. <laughs> yeah, he was not happy. <laughs> I'm gonna try and shoot it from here just to help you. No, no, no. no. Don't touch it. Looks like he's coming towards you now. I, How think, do I, oh, yeah. I think we've got him. <laughs> We played a lot on a PvE server, which meant we weren't getting ganked by other players that much, and I think that's where the game really shines. It's you against the environment. Wild Sabertooths are f not my friends. Finding enough food to eat and to drink. To poop. To poop. We're so quickly becoming civilized. We are. Was that like a cheerful, thanks buddy. It was. You just pooped in front of me. <laughs> It save is it. the size of your head. I'm gonna pick it up. Pick it up and save it. <laughs> okay. And now, you ate raw or rotted food. Your health is decreasing. <laughs> Tony, <eat> my poo! <laughs> I love that the dinosaurs poop too, and it's always so unexpected when it's it happens. It's always so huge. Yeah. I had a pretty good time with this, Nick. It's not pick up and play fun. You can't just jump in and have a good time instantly, but it does have a lot of potential. Yeah. I am a bit hesitant to recommend this game right now though, just because it's still so rough and runs so poorly. Yeah, I understand that, but for me, I really like this game. I just feel like there's so much wonder in it, and I'm really fond of the little dino family we've been raising, and sure, there's lots of early access jank to it, but the devs are being really good at putting out big patches and responding to the community, and we haven't even leveled up enough to get in one of those arcs. Mm. What's in there, Bajo? Is it treasure? Is it dragons? I don't know, Nick, but I want to get in there and do a poop. And I want to eat it. Oh, Nick, 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 look at this. Yeah. Look, look, look. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The show will begin soon. 
E3 is undoubtedly the biggest spectacle on the gaming calendar, and for a lot of us, it's about staying up late and devouring every morsel of information and just getting on board the hype train. But as great as all of that is, there's a side to E3 that personally I always look forward to. Specifically the press conferences, and not so much for the announcements, it's for those awkward executives, those nervous developers, technical hiccups, and just plain lame announcements that leave me cringing. Because I think I've found the perfect answer. As I see it, the most forgivable fails are the technical stuff-ups. We all appreciate that these games aren't finished, and playing them live is a big risk. So when they crash, or a controller disconnects, or someone accidentally pauses the game... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that's me! Sure, it's pretty painful to watch, but at least it clearly isn't all smoke and mirrors and pre-recorded videos. It's just raw code running on a console. Looks like we're having a little interference here. Somebody out there using wireless. And developers are keener than ever to prove that what we're seeing is what we're actually getting, because we can be a slightly suspicious bunch when we see something that looks a little too good to be true. But we haven't always been so sceptical. It's just that over the years we've seen demos and trailers that I don't want to say were flat-out lies. Bet you can't stick it. But when we saw the final game, it wasn't exactly what we were promised. I'm sure there wasn't any ill will from the developers. No doubt what they showed us was the game they aimed to make. But sometimes games are shown too early or they're being made for consoles that don't even exist yet. And the reality of having to develop a game that actually works can sometimes butt heads with the developer's original ambition. But hey, whatever. I say reach for the stars. Still, the most cringeworthy moments aren't from ambitious demos or crashed code. It's the people, the human error, those over-enthusiastic and endearingly awkward execs hawking their latest and greatest. My body, my body is ready. It's Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer. Remember that one? And of course, we can't forget some of those classic moments that motion gaming have given us. Ever wonder what the bottom of an Avatar shoe looks like? Well, bam! There it is. For most of us, it's always hard to stomach when executives just seem to completely miss the point of a gaming conference. They harp on about entertainment deals and sales numbers, and then they expect a round of applause at the end of it. For the first time, they can create multi-screen entertainment that makes movies, music, and TV more amazing. That's a clap line. That's an applause line. My heart does go out to those poor, nervous developers, though, who've been working in secret for years on their next breakthrough, just pushed out in front of the world and praying people like what they've been making. Sorry. Woo! <laughs> yeah! And those weirdly out-of-place celebrity walk-ons, they always seem to be desperately trying to prove that gaming is so in right now. But all we're hearing is the cha-ching of some giant marketing deal. Then again, it is LA, and I guess you can't really blame them for getting caught up in all the glitz and glamour. All right. Looks like they want us to talk amongst ourselves, Paul. Yeah, I think so. What I do you think of the game? I love it. I love it. It's you great. love it? Yeah. I okay. can't play it. Thank you. Thank you Although credit where credit is due, Matt Stone and Trey Parker did absolutely steal Microsoft's 2012 press conference. Hi. How many times have you been watching an episode of South Park and thought, I'd like to be able to watch this on my television while hooked into my mobile device, which is being controlled by my tablet device, which is hooked into my oven, all while sitting in the refrigerator. <laughs> At least guests can be cut short or ushered off stage. It's when the person driving the thing crashes it into a ditch of awkwardness, then the whole thing can just be too painful to watch. Let's watch. I, uh, video games, um... There are so many virgins in here. Richard Branson is, uh, doing this event. Everyone do it with me. From Neversoft, wasn't that the first... Name for Viagra? I don't... Here, hold my joy wand. Let's count how many times Aisha gets girl wood during this presentation. 
So I'm not afraid of a few dick jokes, thank you. So I was wondering if I could just do the whole interview as Ozzy Osbourne. Absolutely. All right. Aren't you doing that already? No. <laughs> As the years go on and viewer numbers rise and the pressure builds even more, you can sense that presentations are becoming slicker and more streamlined. I, I gotta be honest, I, I feel like that's a mixed reaction. If you don't want it, it's fine. You can just leave it there. The best example is Nintendo, who've opted out of the press conference game altogether and now have complete control of their message with their Nintendo digital events. And fair enough, their message is the one that's always been the most at risk of getting lost in translation, quite literally. Maybe we should do uh, getting an item one last time. This one with the full orchestra. <laughs> Getting an item. But at least they also don't take themselves too seriously. How about this instead? Looks like I'm the new face of Nintendo. Hey, they promised me you wouldn't be here. At the end of the day, there's just nothing quite like E3. It's big, it's loud, and it's totally goofy, but it's also a celebration of all the hard work from thousands of people on one of the world's biggest stages. So, E3, don't ever change. Hello! Oh! <laughs> Amazing. Thanks, Goose. Gotham is under siege, and it's up to Batman to even the odds. He's in for a very long night. What can you see? A city engulfed in fear. Betrayed by those who trust the most. Your darkest secrets revealed. As I tear your mind apart, and the whole world will see the fear in your eyes, then they too will understand. There is no savior. No more hope. No more. Batman Arkham Knight is the fourth recent Batman game and the third one from the series creator Rocksteady Studios. And it is near impossible to review this game without spoilers, but we swear we will do everything in our power to do just that. So I promise, on my heart, on our parents' graves, that this will be a spoiler-free review. Yes, well, we're huge Batman fans, so it is our duty to do so, as it is Batman's duty to punch the face of goons. <laughs> So yes, no spoilers, but we are going to assume you finished Rocksteady's last game, Arkham City. Yes, and if you haven't, firstly, why not? And secondly, it's your own fault, which is why I'm going to say the ending of that game right now, because the Joker died, he's dead. And you're reminded of that fact pretty quickly. But villains are plentiful in Gotham. Scarecrow is up to his old tricks, preparing something called the Cloud Burst with a highly concentrated fear toxin. Gotham, this is your only warning. He plans to infect the entire city, which is quickly evacuated. Except for dumb goons, of course, who just hoon around the streets, getting in Batman's way. <laughs> this chaos also opens the door for other major Batman villains to pop into town and start causing trouble. The other major player is a mysterious villain known as the Arkham Knight. He has a sizable military force of drones and soldiers which pose new tactical problems for Batman and for you to explore. The identity of the Arkham Knight is unknown. The only thing you do know is that he's got a connection to Batman and likes a bit of Bat cosplay. He's a bit of a Bat fan. But the mystery of who the Arkham Knight is is a huge hook into your spine and it pulls you right into the game and drives you to the very end. Yes, but the main reason why this game is so different to the others is that it's not just another Batman beats up the bad guy game. It really is an emotional, introspective journey for Bats, delving deep into what he represents to the world around him Thank you. and what consequences his past actions have had on those he cares about. This? It's wrong. We have to make sacrifices, Alfred. Consider those sacrifices wisely, sir. And along the way, Bats is going to have to confront some personal demons, but it's the way they tell the story, Bajo. It's magnificent, and we can't tell you about it. Yeah, it's truly remarkable. And how the mechanics are just woven into the storytelling, it's always unique, always affecting, and it 
constantly surprises you. And it never loses momentum. That's the biggest thing for me. It starts here and it just goes up and up and up until you're in this heightened state of Batman lore subject matter <laughs> euphoria. I don't think I've played a game that has told a story like this. And I don't think a story like this can be told in other mediums. It takes games to get this right. And there's such respect for the characters and the lore as there were in the previous games. Mm. But even more now, you get a sense of this universe and its rogues gallery of villains. You're always in the moment with Batman, feeling like Batman, walking like Batman. I soaked up every cutscene, and they didn't even feel like cutscenes. It was just like I was Batman just being Batman, and the performances are stellar. Yeah, especially Poison Ivy, Jim Gordon, and Scarecrow, who each steal the show at certain points in the game. Do you really think you've won? Fear makes you predictable. Arkham Knight also shows us just how tough Batman can be. I guess Scarecrow gave you the slip. You. He is the epitome of one who does not muck about. Even the way he opens panels is serious business. Ugh. Just use the handle. Yeah. Go to hell. You're launched into the game world within minutes. Perched upon a rooftop, looking over the city, which is your city, you own it and it needs to be cleansed. And the map is huge. It's a true realization of Gotham with no walls stopping bats, no barriers, no boundaries, no out of mission zones. You just need to glide in and take the city back. Yes, and this time to help, you've got this guy. Oh, the Batmobile. It's the biggest change to the series, and it kind of turns the game into a co-op game. It's like Batman and his car taken on the bads. That takes care of the vehicle. I need to interrogate the driver and find out what he knows. And wherever I was, I knew the Batmobile was always somewhere close. It's like a bat safety blanket. Plus, it's got those two creepy compartments in its butt for carrying passengers. So weird. <laughs> Just get in. You're not looking at where you're going, it would be terrifying. <laughs> you get so sick in there, it'd be vomit everywhere. <laughs> Especially jokes. with my driving. <laughs> the car design is reminiscent of the Nolan movie's Tumblr. But it's not just a big, tough car. It's also got a powerful winch for puzzle solving and ramp creating. And it's also a tank. Nick, it always irks me when Batman has a weapon which is like a gun in any way, whether it's on a car or not. And I don't know, it is addressed in the game a little bit. Maybe I'm just being too sensitive. Yeah, I guess technically he never kills anyone with his enormous killer gun. Guys, I almost hit Batman. It's always suppression rounds for people and tank shells for the Knight's forces, who conveniently are robotic drones. At first, Bajo, I thought, robot tanks? This kind of seems like a lame solution to the Batman doesn't kill anyone idea, but it actually worked kind of well. I was impressed. I did struggle a bit with the driving, though, and I did find some of those Riddler challenge races a little bit tedious. Did you really believe that a challenge designed by me, the Riddler, would be quite so easy? I didn't mind the Riddler stuff, but I totally agree about the driving. I found that once I stopped driving it like it was a car and started driving it like it was Miley Cyrus's Wrecking Ball, then that really helped. Taking fire! In battle mode, though, maneuvering is intuitive and fighting as a tank works well. And that's straight. <laughs> yeah, once you realize, though, that walls aren't really a problem for the Batmobile, it's suddenly a lot more fun just crashing through the city with reckless abandon. Batman is the worst thing that happened to Gotham. <laughs> yeah. It was like that when I got here. <laughs> And the Batmobile isn't an I-win mechanic either. Can take out goons in one hit, but most fist fights are on rooftops or indoors, so there still is plenty of biffo. But it is really impressive how the Batmobile is woven into the gameplay. Yeah, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed all those tandem moments where I'm using the Batmobile to take out some goons while Batman's trapped somewhere. Really, the Batmobile is just another one of Batman's gadgets. It's his mobile iron fist on wheels. And what about how beautiful the car is, and the suit, and the city design, and then the everything else in this game? Yeah, we reviewed this on PS4, and it does look fantastic. It's so smooth. And it's the first time that I felt like I've been in a living, breathing Gotham City. Buildings aren't just big squares with a texture on top. There's detail and depth to them. Recognizable districts, a real sense of space, especially as you glide about. It's such a joy navigating about this world. Yeah, and even though it's still missing the citizens on the streets like with the other games, it's still a city that feels alive. 
And when you transition from one location to the next, either inside buildings or just over the fence into a mission area, it's just so seamless. Yeah, that really is the word for this game. It's GTA 5 tier at times. Yeah, and it seems like every hour a new side mission pops up, and they're all different, they're all true to lore and interesting to pursue. Bring me Bruce Wayne. Way too many side missions to mention, but they are just so rewarding. Nick, I never need to 100% a game, but I need to 100% this game. <laughs> yeah, I'm there with you. I need to do it. I need all the Riddler trophies. I need all of them. And it's a nice way to break up the punchies. And Batman has some new tricks, but so do the enemies. And the hallmark of the series, the counter base combat, is back and mm, it's perfect. And now there's more of a focus on using environmental objects, which feels awesome during a fight. And you're always looking for them and grabbing enemies' weapons, which also hit really hard, but they take precious time to pick up, leaving you open to attacks. And if you've racked up a silent takedown, then you can do the new multi-fear takedown, which is delicious. Because you two aren't paying attention. <laughs> The fear takedown is really the cherry on top of this combat. It's just so good. And it's very Batman too, the way he can scare people long enough to take out a few enemies. Yeah, totally. And also everything, all the gadgets from the other games are unlocked right at the beginning. So it's more a matter of just upgrading your skills and getting these new takedowns. Mm -hmm. You do get to do a bit of new hacking though with flying drones and voice synthesizer technology, which mixes things up a bit. Open the gate. I don't get it. What's there to get? Just get the gate open. Okay. But it is more the change in enemies that keeps these fights interesting. Do it here. But, uh, oh, you're always getting charged. Oh, the charges are so stressful. They, they got me every time. But I do love how the combat forces you to kind of go, okay, I need to isolate this guy so I can now reprioritize who's getting my fists. Yeah, especially when you've got those goons that revive fallen enemies. So annoying. I both love them and hate them at the same time. I mainly hate them. And the big tough guys are even bigger and tougher. You also have fights where Catwoman, Nightwing and Robin can step in to help. During these sequences, it's mostly just about switching characters for fun and using dual takedowns to mix things up. But they also provide fuel for the developing plot lines between the characters. Perfect. Robin's sections are particularly good and I love that there's so much detective work to do now. It's so good. Some of my favourite sections were where you're just scrubbing through surveillance footage and zooming in and analysing what you see with science. And while there are a bunch of minigames throughout the game, it's got that perfect balance of difficulty with controls while cutting the fat and not being too repetitive. Yeah, the devs don't patronise the players. Yeah, and it's not just the Riddler stuff. It's all the puzzles in the game. They're nice and tough. It means you have to work for it and the gameplay is better for it. Uh, I can't take it anymore, Bajo. We need to talk about, in specific detail, the unique storytelling elements that make this game so good. No, Nick, we mustn't. But it is the whole point as to why this game is great. I will not go on until I speak about it on national television. You're going to sit here and break a promise you just made to our viewers. <sighs> Fine. OK, well, how about this? We mute all this in post so that they don't know what we're saying, but we get it out of our system. Sounds like a good compromise. Yeah, yeah except for the lip readers who are going to be able to work it out. You can't please everyone. <laughs> all right, mute on. Oh, and then it just gets better and better. Do you feel any better? No. No, me neither. <laughs> there is just so much to talk about with this game and we do not have time. But what a game. This game, budget. The things you do as Batman and the things you're forced to do is just so creative and thought-provoking. You don't have to do this on your own, Bruce. I can help you. And what an ending. The imagery, the conceptualization of it. Nick, when I finished this game, I put the controller down, put my head in my hands, and a small tear rolled down my face. Oh, no. Yeah, because of pure joy. Oh, well, look, I can definitely see some giant game of the year arguments between this game and The Witcher, and probably Fallout 4 and whatever else is great. But, Bajo, this is just one of the most evolved games I've ever played. It's come so far from Arkham Asylum, which was already great. It's outstanding work by Rocksteady Studios. You can tell they've put everything they have into this game. Bajo, I know I'm just filling in for Hex, but I gotta give this game five out of five stars. It absolutely deserves it, Nick. I'm giving it five out of five stars as well. And of course, that means the Golden Rubber Chicken Award. You die here, and your legend dies with you. You know, we always do something a bit special for Double Fives, and as you're the guest this week, why don't you decide? <gasps> Nudie lap around the ABC.
Nobody wants to see that. Stop suggesting it. <laughs> Why don't we just dress up as Batman and Robin and do a bit of a run around the ABC? I love it. Let's go. No! Oh, no, come on. We talked about this. Yes, we did, and I'm Batman. That's not how Batman remembers it. Are those my underpants? Okay, look, let's not fight. Okay, yes, let's just be awesome. Yes. Yes. I mean, I, I like to get a, a soy cap. I'm not allergic to dairy milk, yeah. but I just, I just like to be different. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I order things with gluten in them. Yeah? Because I... I'm allergic to things that don't have gluten. Right, yeah, that's interesting. Hold on. <sighs> oh, it's a bit cold. Oh, let's go back inside. Yes. Did you bring your pass? Oh, no. <sighs> Alfred! Alfred! Bring me my pants! And a soy cap! Alfred! Well, we're just about out of time for this week, but first... Can I say it? By all means. Did you gain the name for this week? Nailed it. It was Super 3D Noah's Ark from 1994. You play as Noah, who needs to bring his unruly animals under control by the most sensible and realistic means necessary. He shoots sleep-inducing food at them with a slingshot. The game was played on the SNES, but as it was not officially sanctioned by Nintendo, the player had to insert a real Nintendo game on top of Noah's Ark to get it working. And so it's our name the game because, and I don't know if you noticed, but it's set on the Ark and today we looked at Ark Survival Evolved and, and Batman Arkham Knight, so I just thought we could tie it in. It's Ark. It's very clever. Next week on the show, Hex will be bringing you our annual Good Game E3 special. Filled with developer interviews, hands-on first impressions and other goodies from the biggest gaming event of the year. And it'll be a one hour special this year and give you an idea of what it's like being on the show floor. And look, Bajo, thank you very much for having me this week. But I gotta say, I could get used to staying here with your big fancy lights and all these people and this constantly moving camera and these chairs. Well, you can't stay because oh. you've got another show to do mm -hmm. called Pocket, which you can catch on iView and YouTube. But thank you very much for filling in for Hex. It's been lovely having you here. Yeah. And uh, well, until next time, Bajo out. Cheers, yeah, seriously. That's why you say Nick Boy out. Oh, sorry, Nick Boy out. <laughs> Can I try yours? Yeah, by all means. Here we go. Ooh. It's damper than I would have expected. Yeah, well, I get excited about Batman. Yeah. <laughs>